Okay, so we're going to solve a problem where we have a rectangle drawn on a square grid, and we want to count how many squares does the diagonal of our rectangle pass through. So for example, for a 6 by 4 rectangle, you can see just drawing a picture that the diagonal passes through a total of 8 squares. But we want to solve this problem more generally, so for an m by n rectangle, how many squares is the diagonal going to pass through? So there's a really neat argument we can use to solve this problem, to illustrate this just with an example. So for example, for a 5 by 3 rectangle, we're going to draw in the diagonal starting in the bottom left corner and going up to the top right corner. And as we draw this, we start off, we're in this bottom left square, but then each time we cross one of these grid lines, we enter a new square, so we can add one to our count of squares. We start off in the bottom left corner, then moving up, we cross a line, we're into our second square, then into our third, then into our fourth, then into our fifth, sixth, and seventh. So we get a total of seven squares for a five by three rectangle. So you can see here that we could generalize this approach. So we have seven for a five by three rectangle. And this comes as a result of, we start off in the bottom left corner, then we're going to cross four or five minus one of these grid lines, the vertical lines. And similarly, we'll cross three minus one or two of these horizontal lines. So you can see how this could be generalized to an m by n rectangle now. So we would have m minus one vertical lines to cross, and we'd have n minus one horizontal lines to cross. So don't forget that we have this first square that we start in as well. So it seems like a sensible guess for our formula would be one plus, then the number of vertical lines that we cross, one plus m minus one plus n minus one, which would simplify then to m plus n minus one. However, if we try and apply this to our first example, m is six and n is four, you get six plus four minus one is nine, not eight. And there's a problem here because the problem is that we're crossing this vertex in the middle here. So when we pass through this vertex, we're actually crossing a vertical line and a horizontal line at the same time. So instead of counting two more squares, we only actually add one more square, even though we've crossed through two lines. And this would happen every time our diagonal passes through one of the vertices. You would, instead of adding two for the vertical and the horizontal line, you would only add one. So we could actually revise our formula then. Instead of m plus n minus one, we want to have m plus n minus one. However, we need to take away one for each time we cross one of these vertices. So we can just informally write this as m plus n minus one, then minus the number of times we cross one of the vertices. So the number of times the diagonal crosses one of the vertices on our grid. So now we'll have a look at how to actually count in terms of m and n the number of times that we cross a vertex on this grid. And again, there's a really neat way of dealing with this, which we'll illustrate first through an example before looking at the more general picture with m and n. So for our example, let's take a rectangle which is 12 wide and 8 tall. And we're going to try and count to find all of the different points on our grid that the diagonal passes through. And to do this, we're going to introduce some coordinates. So we'll take the bottom left corner to be 0, 0, then going along 12 up 8, we'll take 12, 8 to be the coordinate for the top right corner. So now we can think about this in terms of the gradient of this diagonal line. So if we have a point which lies on our diagonal, then the gradient of this line segment is going to be the same as the gradient of the overall diagonal. So the gradient going from 0, 0 to 12, 8 is just 8 over 12, and this simplifies to 2 thirds. So you can actually see then that this first point that our diagonal line passes through on the grid is going to have coordinates 3, 2, because we just go along 3 and up 2. So going from 0, 0 to 3, 2, we have the same gradient, so this point has to lie on our diagonal. And you can actually tell that this point 3, 2 is going to be the first point that our diagonal passes through, because we fully simplified the fraction here. So if we were to pass through a point sooner than 3, 2, then we would be able to simplify our fraction further. So now that we've got this first point, we can just go along in increments of 3 along 2 up to get our remaining points. So then we have 6, 4 lies on our grid, 
and we've also got 9, 6 on our grid, which the diagonal passes through. So here we've got a total of three points that our diagonal passes through inside the rectangle, which lie on our grid. And this leads us actually to a really nice way of solving the overall problem, because within each of these smaller rectangles, the 3 by 2 rectangles, the diagonal doesn't pass through any points on the grid. So what we could do here is actually take four copies of a 3 by 2 rectangle all joined together, and then we could solve the problem within one of these and just multiply by four. So the picture would look like this, where we'd take four copies of this 3 by 2 rectangle, and then the number of squares that the diagonal passes through in the overall 12 by 8 picture is going to be the same as the number of squares that our diagonal passes through in one of these small squares multiplied by 4. So here we've got a 3 by 2 rectangle, and we can actually apply this formula from earlier. So m plus n minus 1 minus the number of times the diagonal crosses through a vertex, but here the diagonal doesn't cross through any of the vertices within our smaller rectangle. So we'll just have 3 plus 2 minus 1 for each of these smaller rectangles, of which there are 4. So if we multiply this by 4, 4 times 3 plus 2 minus 1, we get a total of 16 squares that our diagonal line passes through. And now we'll see how we can generalise this method for a general m by n rectangle. So we start off by finding what is the gradient of this diagonal going from 0, 0 to m, n. So the gradient is just m over n. And once again, we want to try and split this up into lots of smaller rectangles, where within each of these small rectangles, the diagonal doesn't pass through any more of the vertices on our grid. So we just need to fully simplify this fraction, m over n. So to fully simplify m over n, we just need to divide m and n by their highest common factor, or their greatest common divisor. So we'll write this as m over the greatest common divisor of m and n, all over n over the greatest common divisor of m and n. So this will give us our first point, which lies on the diagonal. And this is the first point which lies on the diagonal because we fully simplified the fraction here. So because we divided by the greatest common divisor, we can't divide the top and bottom number by anything else, so that we get a point closer to 0, 0 there. And you can notice as well that if m and n don't actually have any common factors, then we're not going to have any more points on the diagonal within the rectangle. So we just take the greatest common divisor as 1 in that situation, and our formula will still apply. So then we've got this small rectangle here, and we're going to have a certain number of these, which we'll work out in a sec. And the idea is, just like before, we take loads of these rectangles, and within one of these individual rectangles, we can say that the diagonal isn't going to touch any of the vertices on our grid. This is because we fully simplified the fraction. So what is the width and height of this little rectangle here? Well, the width is going to be this m over the greatest common divisor. So I'll just write m over the greatest common divisor, and here the height is going to be n over the greatest common divisor. And we know because this doesn't pass through any more vertices, when we apply our previous formula, we can just use m over the greatest common divisor plus n over the greatest common divisor minus 1, and we don't need to subtract anything else. So within each of these small rectangles, we're going to have m over the greatest common divisor of m and n plus n over the greatest common divisor of m and n minus 1 squares that our diagonal line passes through. So all we need to work out now is how many of these small rectangles do we actually have. Well, we started with an m by n rectangle, and we've split it up into lots of m over the greatest common divisor by n over the greatest common divisor rectangle. So actually, the greatest common divisor is actually telling us the number of these small rectangles we've got. So in the end, we just need to multiply this, which is the number of squares that the diagonal passes through in one of our small rectangles, we just need to multiply this by the greatest common divisor of m and n. So multiplying this out, the greatest common divisors cancel with these first two terms, so we get m plus n, and minus 1 times the greatest common divisor, so we subtract the greatest common divisor of m and n.
So this is the total number of squares that the diagonal line will pass through on our grid for a rectangle which is m by n.